In Texas, a new American naval industrial strategy is taking shape. A company called Saronic Technologies is developing a capability the US Navy hasn't had for decades, the ability to mass-produce naval vessels at speed. At the center of this effort is Port Alpha, America's first shipyard designed from the ground up for the series production of autonomous warships. This facility is already operational, backed by over $600 million in recent investment and a company valuation of around $4 billion. Saronic is proving it can deliver unmanned surface vessels, USVs, at a pace that far outstrips traditional military procurement timelines. The strategic motivation for this push is clear. The People's Republic of China has grown its navy to over 350 ships, giving it a significant numerical advantage in the Indo-Pacific. Traditional shipbuilding, which often takes years to get a single vessel from contract to active duty, is too slow to close this gap. Port Alpha and Saronic's production model are built to tackle this problem head on. By using modular construction and AI-guided production lines, they can dramatically speed up the delivery of a new autonomous fleet. These vessels are designed from the start for frontline combat. They operate without crews, don't need extensive support, and can stay at sea for long periods. The US Navy is not treating this as a simple R&D project. These platforms are being brought into service through operational contracts, marking a major shift toward a hybrid fleet of manned and unmanned ships ready for the challenges of the Pacific. What follows is a breakdown of the family of systems being produced, from the smallest tactical boat to the largest strategic platform. 6. Spyglass Six feet of trouble that fits where manned boats can't. Think pocket-size picket ship. The first system in this new family is a small, deployable sensor platform for reconnaissance and interdiction missions close to shore. The spyglass can be launched from a beach, a larger boat, or a mothership, giving it tactical flexibility. It has a top speed of 20 knots, a 40-pound payload capacity, and an operational range of 30 nautical miles. The main advantage of the spyglass is its small size and adaptability. At six feet, spyglass noses into mangrove cuts, marina alleys, pier shadows, the clutter where bigger hulls get shy and sensors get noisy. This makes it ideal for securing harbors, conducting surveillance on port facilities, or carrying out swarming reconnaissance missions to overwhelm an adversary. The operational concept is built around speed. A spyglass can be launched, complete its mission, be recovered, fitted with a new payload, and sent back out within hours. Its 40-pound modular payload bay can be adapted for various missions. Standard equipment includes electro-optical slash infrared, EOIR sensors for identifying targets, compact electronic warfare, EW packages for disrupting enemy communications, or even a small demolition charge. The platform can also carry a loitering munition, giving it a limited but effective strike capability against high-value targets. The Spyglass is a proof of concept for Saronic's entire philosophy, quickly delivering real, mission-ready hardware to solve specific tactical problems. 5. Cutlass the bigger brother with sharper elbows. Building on the Spyglass, this 14-foot USV offers a significant increase in capability. With a 200-pound payload and a range of 300 nautical miles, 10 times that of the Spyglass, the Cutlass is more than just a sensor platform. It is a persistent, networked asset. While it maintains a top speed of 20 knots, its increased endurance and payload allow it to perform more complex missions. It is designed to act as a forward element of a larger command and control network, capable of deploying smaller drones, relaying data, and classifying ships while staying out of range of coastal defenses. A key feature of the Cutlass is its onboard sensor suite, which includes its own mast and radar system. This allows it to see, track, and classify targets on its own, reducing the workload on human operators. The vessel's control system is built with open modular software, allowing for the rapid integration of new payloads. This means the Cutlass can be configured for surveillance one day, electronic warfare the next, or a strike mission with loitering munitions. This capability was proven in a real-world exercise. During the US Navy's inter... Uh, 
problem. 2.4.1 comma. A cutlass successfully launched an Altius loitering munition at sea, demonstrating a clean transfer from an unmanned platform. The exercise confirmed its role as a mobile floating missile launcher. A typical mission would see it launch from a pier or mothership, travel to a patrol area, deploy sensors, send targeting data back to the main force, and, if ordered, engage a target. The cutlass fills a critical middleweight role, small enough to be a poor target for expensive anti-ship missiles, but capable enough to be a serious threat. 4. Corsair 24 feet of multi-mission attitude. This USV is built for open ocean operations. Its specifications show a clear shift away from coastal tasks, a top speed over 35 knots, a payload of about 1,000 pounds, and an operational range of over 1,000 nautical miles. This allows the Corsair to conduct missions lasting several days, patrol entire sea lanes, or move between different naval task groups without needing immediate support. The Corsair's design is focused on a large modular bay that can hold a wide range of mission packages. For anti-submarine warfare, ASW, it can be equipped to tow sonar arrays and create a mobile, unmanned detection line. For logistics, it can act as a high-speed delivery vehicle, bringing spare parts or supplies to forward units. In a deception role, the Corsair can be fitted with emitters and radar reflectors to create the electronic signature of a larger ship, acting as a decoy to draw enemy fire away from high-value manned vessels. Next run, it grows a fake moustache and does decoy work, puffing a bigger signature to burn the enemy's targeting cycle. As a strike platform, it can serve as a remote weapons magazine, carrying a rack of loitering munitions to extend the reach of a parent warship, allowing that ship to save its own missiles. Its high speed also makes it effective for shadowing hostile ships, providing persistent surveillance from over the horizon. The Corsair is a truly multi-mission platform, giving the fleet a versatile tool for distributed operations across vast ocean areas. 3. Mirage now we're into ship-sized silhouettes. This vessel is designed for broad area tasks like maritime security patrols, picket duty, and deception, and escort for mixed naval groups. With a 2,000 nautical mile range, a top speed over 35 knots, and a payload up to 2,000 pounds, the Mirage can patrol a specific area for extended periods with a high degree of autonomy. The Mirage uses the same browser-based command system and mission AI as the smaller vessels, which ensures a common control interface across the fleet and simplifies training. Its modular design allows it to carry more substantial systems, including medium-sized radar arrays, tall EOIR masts for identification at longer ranges, comprehensive EW suites, and larger racks of loitering munitions for greater offensive power. In an escort role, two or three Mirage USVs can form a protective screen around a high-value ship like a frigate. They can act as wingmen, mirroring the manned ship's movements, autonomously investigating contacts, and passing threat data to the primary vessel. This creates a layered defense and allows the manned ship to conserve fuel, crew stamina, and ammunition for the most critical fights. A small group of Mirages can establish a self-coordinating patrol network, securing a large maritime area without putting any sailors in harm's way. 2. Cypher this isn't just a boat, it's a quiet problem set for anyone watching the plot board. It marks a shift from direct combat to logistics and mission support at high speeds. It is 60 feet long, has a top speed over 35 knots, a range of 3,000 nautical miles, and can carry 10,000 pounds. Its most important feature, however, is its ability to carry a standard 20-foot ISO shipping container. This simple design choice gives it immense operational flexibility, as almost any containerized system can be deployed at sea. This turns the Cypher into a high-speed, multi-purpose utility boat. It can transport a containerized command post, an electronic warfare van, a drone workshop, a medical facility, or simple supplies. Unlike slower logistics ships, the Cypher's high speed allows it to keep pace with a carrier strike group, providing on-demand support directly in the operational area. It can act as a ghost forklift, racing ahead of a convoy to drop off fuel and supplies, or delivering critical repair parts to a damaged ship without a risky crew transfer. It sprints ahead of the convoy, 
caches fuel bladders and parts on a speck of reef, then loops back to hand off a strike package from its container bay. By serving as a mobile, containerized magazine, it helps distribute a task group's assets and increases its overall survivability. 1. Marauder. The king of them all. This is 150 feet of unmanned persuasion, designed for strategic impact. With a range of about 3,500 nautical miles, a top speed around 80 knots, and a massive payload of 40 metric tons, the Marauder is an industrial-scale platform. Its deck space can carry two 40-foot ISO containers, or four 20-foot containers, allowing it to transport entire mission systems into forward areas. The Marauder can operate as an unmanned arsenal ship, carrying containerized missile launchers to boost a task force's firepower, or laying minefields in strategic choke points. It can be configured as a powerful sensor platform, carrying large radar systems too big for smaller USVs. As a logistics hub, it can serve as a mothership for an entire group of smaller unmanned systems, providing fuel, repairs, and rearming services far from established bases. It uses the same autonomy software as the smaller vessels, allowing for easy integration into the fleet's command structure. Production of the first Marauder has begun in Franklin, Louisiana, at a facility currently receiving about $250 million in upgrades. The company's stated goal is to produce up to 50 autonomous vessels per year across its entire product line. This scale of production is key to the entire strategy. If Port Alpha and its related facilities meet these goals, the US Navy could see a rapid and significant growth of its fleet, creating a distributed, resilient, and autonomous force that can offset numerical disadvantages and reshape the balance of naval power.